army. We're living prophecy, brothers and sisters. We are living prophecy. Y'all understand that thing? Yes, sir. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, you are the Israelites. Because guess what? The people in the Bible didn't just magically disappear. Their descendants are standing before me this day. That's you right. are the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are the sons and daughters of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's the right. greatest people on the planet. Right. No one can compare to you. No one on this planet. The Chinese man can't compare to you. The Japanese man can't compare to you. The East Indian man can't compare to you. You are royalty before me. Seeing the Israelites wake up tribe by tribe, man and woman, boy and girl. He said, our time is short. These guys are waking up. All the money we spent to keep them in darkness has availed us nothing. And they stood upon their feet. And we stood upon our feet as the Israelites. And great fear fell upon them which saw the nations were afraid. What are we reading in the Bible? So society is against us. Why? Because we've given back the esteem to our people as the Israelites. We're not saying that you're equal to everybody. We're saying you are above all. Nations! That's right. That's what the Bible says. God ain't looking for a church group. He said a great exceeding army stood up. And what's our weapon? The Bible. It's not, it's not any dress because sisters wear dresses to the club, don't they? They wear dresses to the club, right? Or do you think those are the type of dresses that God wants the sisters to be wearing? Bring it up. Not Bring it up. at all, not at all. Those are worse than pants. You understand? Watch this. Let's see what kind of what kind of dresses the Lord says the princesses of God are supposed to be wearing. Watch this. Read. This is the book of First Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 9. Bring it up. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves. That women do what? Adorn themselves in modest apparel. You see that? He said that the princesses of God are supposed to be in modest apparel. You know what modesty is? Modesty is the exact opposite of what they got going on in this world today. Modesty is anything that... Um, that um, let me get the definition of modesty because I can't I can't quote it. Let me get the definition of modest. We're gonna get the definition for you, all right? Because the Bible says what? Read it again. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So you're supposed to be in something modest. Right. We're gonna get the definition of modest for you right now, and it might shock you, but it might not. It depends on what type, what type of spirit you're in. You got it? Read that. Modest, dressing or behaving so as to avoid impro impropriety or indecency, especially... A uh, what? Especially... Pay attention, sister, this is the point. It says modesty is especially what? To avoid attracting sexual attention. To avoid attracting sexual attention. Read. Typically, use of a woman. The modest, the modest, what the, the modest women wear long sleeve dresses, and all about covering their faces of clothing, not revealing, not what, not revealing. It says of clothing that's not revealing or emphasizing the figure, or emphasizing your behind, or your curves, or your chest, right. or your stomach. You're not supposed to emphasize those things right. because why? Because why? Then. Go to uh go to um Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 29. What up, effect does that have on the community when when sisters are dressing like that? I'm gonna tell you it has a it has a negative effect. You understand, sister? So you're not to be wearing you're not so none of our sisters are supposed to be wearing dress um, or pants. That's not in the Bible. You believe in the Bible, right? Okay, why not? It's because I'm gonna tell you why. It's because you didn't know that you didn't know the way God look at sisters when they wear dresses. You didn't know that God hates, He detests, He thinks it's disgusting when sisters wear pants. 
I bet you if you would have known that, you would have been like, okay, let me put my dress on. Because he loves when the sisters wear their dresses, right. their royal garments, and they look like princesses. Right. But when, they are, when they're in pants, he said that's an abomination. Give me some rock uh, 1513. Let's see how the Lord, the Lord feels about go. abominations. That's the, that's the thing that's going on with our community. They don't know God. They don't know how God feels about their actions. Right. Like my brother, wh how you feel about a sister wearing a dress? What you mean ain't nothing you can do about it? Ain't you supposed to be the, the man yeah. of your community? Yeah. Ain't you supposed to stand up and lead your community? Right. Yeah. You're right. So there is something you can do about it. You could come back to God and get yourself right so you could be out here helping us raise back up our community right. and raise back up our brothers and sisters. Right. Listen, it's on us to do it. We cannot sit back and let the sisters try to lead. Right. It's not going to work. The men have to stand up. You understand? So watch this. Give me Sirach chapter 15. Is that what I want? Read. This is the book of Sirach chapter 15 and verse 13. Bring it up. The Lord hated all abomination, and they that fear God love it not. So it says the Lord hated all abomination. He said that sisters in pants is an abomination to him. How do you feel about that, sister? How does that rub you? Say that again? It shouldn't matter what we wear. Why you say that? Okay, have you ever heard of leggings? You know what leggings are, right? What are they? Uh-huh. What type of, what uh, article of clothing are they? You know, you got shirts, you got pants, you got socks. What are clothings, uh, what do, what do uh, stockings or, or uh, leggings fall under? Uh, what? Say it again? Yes, underwear. Underwear. So why is sisters walking around with leggings with nothing over it, with nothing covering it? So that's what you're supposed to wear if you're cold. If you have a dress on, you put your leggings on up under it to keep yourself warm. I have a wife. She does it all the time, every day, 24-7. She's never cold. She's always warm because she has her leggings on under her dress. You understand that? What our mind wants to do is it wants to make an excuse for what we actually want to do and what we want to wear. You understand? So, so would you follow that now? Now that there's a solution... To that, how would you would you uh, would you apply that? Would you put your princess dress on? Okay, okay. Give me a uh, First Corinthians eleven and three. Huh? Okay, you can uh, you can acquire some. Listen, dresses are not that expensive. You can definitely acquire you some dresses. Listen, uh, real quick. Give me uh, John chapter 14, verse 15. Bring it up. Give me John chapter 14, verse 15. Do you love Jesus Christ? Huh? It's your Jesus Christ, the Jesus Christ of the Bible. Because the only, word, only place you read, the whole idea of Jesus Christ comes from the Bible. The only place you read about Jesus Christ is in the Bible. Right. So your Jesus Christ has to be the Jesus Christ of the Bible. It is. Okay, let's read this. John chapter 14, verse 15. This is the book of John chapter 14 and verse 15. Bring it out. If ye love me. Sister Jackie says she loved Christ. These words are written in red. This is Christ speaking. Right. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. No, do what you want to do. Keep my commandments. Now, what did that say? What did that, what did that scripture just say? You want me to read it again for you? Yes. Yes. Read it again. John chapter 14 and verse 15. Bring it out. If ye love me, keep my commandment. Now what did that say? It's letting you know. Right, right. So if you don't listen, what does that show? That you do not love Jesus Christ. Right. You have no love for Jesus. And if you don't love Christ, that means you don't love God. Right. You know who that means you do love, though? The devil, right. Satan, 
You understand? That's that's who that's who you're uh you're you're giving your allegiance to, to Satan when you do the when you do the opposite of what the Bible says. Right. When you do the opposite of what Christ says, that's called antichrist. Right. So that's what that's who your allegiance is to. You don't want to be that, do you? So what should you do? As far as pertaining to clothing. Right, and what's his what his commandments say about uh, clothing? Get First Corinthians eleven. I gotta make sure you understand. What should a sister be wearing? Yes, yes, dresses. So watch this, huh? No, no, no. You it's supposed to be modest. It's supposed to be loose. It's not supposed to be form fitting. Nobody's supposed to be able to see our our our. our it's supposed to be past your knee. You understand? It's supposed to be passion, neat, loose fitting. So now, give me 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. Read. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. Bring it verse, up. Yes. Well, I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So the head of every man is Christ. Christ is our leader. Right. The man's leader is Christ. Read. And the head, and the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the woman is the man. The man is the leader of the woman. Right, right. That's not how it is in today's society, but that's what it's going back to because that's what the Bible says. Right. How do you feel about that? You, you guess it's 50-50. Wait, say that again? The Bible said it, yeah. Are you supposed to carry on and deal with his problems? Okay, give me, uh, what's that in Sirach, uh, a godly man? Sirach chapter 37 and verse 12. We're going to show you that because, because we're not talking, we're not talking about, um, uh, Negroes that are not in a right state of mind. Right as leaders we're talking about godly men who's going to lead you to christ not a, not a nigga that's going to lead you to drugs right. or to alcoholism or right. to some crazy thing like that we're talking about somebody that's going to lead you in the laws of christ right. so so watch this read this is the book of Sirach, chapter 37 and verse 12. but be thou continually with a godly man what the bible says but be continually with a godly man. So you're supposed to be with a godly man. That's right. Not a Negro that's out here smoking weed 24-7 right. and not leading his household, don't take care of his kids or nothing yeah, like that. Right. You understand? You're supposed to be with a godly man. So when the Bible says that the man is the head, yes, it's talking about all men, but ultimately you're supposed to be with a godly man. Right. You understand? Watch. Go back to, uh, to uh, 1 Corinthians 11. Oh, read it. Read on. But be continually with a godly man, who thou knowest to keep the commandments of the what? Who thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. You see what the Bible says? It says, be with somebody who you know is going to keep the commandments of the Lord. Right. Why? Because you know that he loves God. And, and if you love God, guess what? That marriage. Right. He's going to bless you. Right. But if you're following after Satan then he's leading you to death. We would never tell you to follow after somebody that's gonna lead you to death. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.